Our guest today faced a life-changing medical incident as an eighth grader. And as she embraced that and was present with that and pivoted with that, that's the time in her life that ignited that desire to be an entrepreneur. She has now become an incredibly successful entrepreneur for the last eight years, doing what she loves in the area of art and graphics and branding. She helps organizations thoughtfully and creatively and artistically take their personal why and shift it into their professional why. Her work is now seen in airport shops, in museum shops, all throughout the Chicagoland area. But today she's going to take us on her journey. She's going to share with you the highs and the lows of being an entrepreneur. She's going to give you some amazing nuggets into how to lean into those entrepreneurial moments that may or may not be serving you. She is a true testament of choosing a path that serves you, but that also allows you to create that work-life family integration that your physical health requires. I'm excited for you to join this conversation today with Chelsea Tams. Welcome to the GSD Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Misha Blameyer farish and today we have Chelsea Tams with us. Hi, Chelsea. How are you? Hi, Misha. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being with us today. So, Chelsea, tell our listeners a little bit about your story and a little bit about yourself, and I'm really excited to dive into it because you have been an entrepreneur now for over a decade. And congratulations. But I really want our listeners to hear what was your why and your purpose for getting into entrepreneurship over 10 years ago? Yeah, I love that question. Love sharing a little bit more of the background and backstory to how I got where I am today. Because I think young, like childhood me, wouldn't have envisioned this. But it also really traces back to then. So when I was in eighth grade, I had scoliosis and had a spinal fusion surgery. And I think that what kind of pushed me on this path first was like really leaning into art and loving. I've always loved doing everything art related, but that really got me like even more into it because I think there was just no limitations as to what you can do. You can make art however you want to, and you can really lean into your limitations without even acknowledging that that's what's happening. And I think that was a really cool thing that happened when I was younger is just being able to do that versus the usual and typical like participating in sports. There were some challenges there of like not making a team here and there or not having all of the capabilities and abilities to participate that in the same way that I did before I had surgery. So I think that was a huge motivator that kind of subtly put me on that path. And then when I was in high school, I took my first graphic design classes and kind of fell in love with that and realized that there was a huge career potential there. One that's, I think, untapped or unknown about when you're like a lot younger. You just don't know exactly like, oh, art can be a career. And there's such a negative stigma around it too. So figuring out like, how can you make it work for you? So it really traces back to then. And then Fast forward to college, I studied graphic design, Spanish, and marketing. And then after graduating, expedited my goals of becoming a business owner in the sense that I won some startup funding from my university. And I think the reason for that traces all the way back to the surgery that I had in eighth grade, which was really just motivating me to figure out like, how do I make this work for me instead of going to a larger agency, which I was really excited to do. But I think I had this like laser focused goal of like one day I want to own my own business. And because I knew that at such a young age, I was able to do the things that were needed to get the experience or just be naive enough to say yes to doing that earlier than I would have otherwise. So I started my business in 2016, right out of college and had some experiences of entrepreneurship before that as well, that I think like subtly influenced that I was like ready to make that jump and ready a lot sooner than many people are because we're really told like, you have to go to college, you have to get this traditional nine to five job. And it is a little bit harder to find 
them in the creative space. So I just made a point of making my own and and jumped into that. And I've been riding that wave ever since. So many inspirational notes throughout your story. I think it is so important that we ignite those ideas and those dream bigs in the young generation, right? In those middle schoolers, in those high schoolers. And show them what the art of possibility and really talk to them about, you know, yes, there are these more traditional paths, but there are these non-traditional paths as well. And here you took a card that you were dealt and said, hey, I want to make a life that works for me. I want to make a life that I get to tap into my passion, but I have that flexibility with, with my health and my situation. And I think that's so important. And, you know, to have been a successful entrepreneur for as long as you have, kudos to you, because I think so many times entrepreneurs, you know, they may have that idea, but it's that resiliency and that confidence to really push through those hard times and push through those, those valleys, if you will, are those seasons that really, you know, that are more of a struggle. So talk to our listeners today about some of those lessons that you've learned along the way where you really had to dig deeper. You really had to dig in and say, all right, I'm going to remind myself of why I'm doing this to keep going. Yeah, such a great question. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is just this need to do it your own way if your motivation is for yourself. And I think that it always should be because why do we have a job? We have a job to be able to live our lives personally. So if you haven't figured out your personal why that's underneath your business why, it can be really hard at the end of the day or when challenging things come up to be able to say, this is the solution or this is the path for me to take because you don't have that figured out yet. So I think it takes a lot of personal work, number one. But then number two, like figuring out like, how do you make your business work for you? Because if you are an entrepreneur, you are going to get a lot of unsolicited advice from many people around you. And so how do you filter that through your why, your motivations, what excites you, and not get distracted by really credible people that are giving advice, but giving advice that don't take your full situation and context into into the advice that they're giving. So how do you separate those things out? And I think a hard lesson that I learned was every suggestion you get or every piece of advice isn't good for you. So I did a personal project that was really centered around a request that I was getting that didn't really excite me, but seemed like, I keep hearing this, so I need to do this. And now being a little bit further along in business, that was somewhat of a waste of time because it wasn't aligned with what I really wanted. So I don't regret doing it by any means, but it just wasn't the best use of my time. It didn't put me in the direction that I wanted to be in. And I think it was because I didn't have that strong muscle to say like, no, that advice could be very valid for the majority of people, but it doesn't really apply to me for this reason. And I think building that muscle and skill is really hard to do and really important because it's not about just dismissing everything if you're not interested in doing the work. It's about dismissing the things that specifically don't resonate with you for a reason that maybe everyone doesn't understand. And I think that's a hard lesson to learn because you need to know yourself really well to make that distinction between this is something that's not going to work for me and this is something I'm not going to put the effort in or be willing to try. And there's a big difference between those two. And I don't think we can even learn that until we try it a couple times and realize and learn like, oh, my gut was right. But sometimes there's a gut feeling of being scared to do something. And sometimes there's a gut feeling of, I don't think this is the right path for me. And it's hard to separate those two and tell the difference without some experiences. Two incredible nuggets there, right? And I think that what's important is, and I, as a mentor to other entrepreneurs, I say this all the time, take what I say and then filter it through your lens and see what serves you. Because some of it may serve you, some of it may not serve you, all of it, whatever it is. And I think that that's so important. And I think you've really honed in on that is take it and really sit with it and see what serves you, but then let the rest go. And I think that's that first amazing nugget that you've landed with us. The second one I think is 
you have to fail. You have to fail fast and you have to fail forward. And you're learning what to do, what works for you, but you're also learning what not to do and what doesn't work for you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's hard to build up that resilience to failure and like the ability to still move forward despite all of the failures because they are inevitable in business, especially when you have to wear all the hats and do all the things. Like you're not proficient in every area of business. Like you're not going to be great at everything. There's going to be a learning curve so many times over. So how do you keep going? And how do you just understand this is part of the process? And that's part of what makes it fun if you're willing to embrace that. Amazing. So Chelsea, tell our listeners a little bit about some of your business and what you do and kind of your main products are and where some of those products are today. Yeah. So when I got started, I really had a motivation to bring lettering into a full-time business. I love all things lettering, art, and graphic design. So that was really the core. And I still think it's the core today. But how it's grown is it's gone from me working with local businesses on branding and logos and having a really small line of merchandise for the Peoria and Central Illinois area, which to be honest, at that point didn't really have much. It, by the way, of like fun products that you could send, postcards that you could send to say you love living there. Um, So I got started there. And since then, I've grown to have online courses for artists. I've done a bit more consulting and mentoring and helping other business owners and artists who want to make their art their full-time career, as well as continued and really grown the branding arm of my business. So been able to work on larger campaigns, as well as continuing to work with small businesses and artists and creatives, creating their unique logos that really translates their their passion into visuals they can use to take those next steps forward and feel confident in what they're doing. And then I've really grown the wholesale arm of my business as well. So those products are mostly stickers and other paper goods. I absolutely love creating them. So I've created probably well over 200 designs in the past eight plus years um, that are all sold to local museums, retailers, independent retailers for the most part, So even in the O'Hare Airport here in Chicago. So just lots of different locations throughout the U.S., um, mostly focusing on like small and cultural institutions. And it's been so fun to like see those things, like see my artwork at a shop at Navy Pier, which is a newer one. I sell at Flyover Chicago. And then also when I'm flying somewhere at O'Hare to sometimes be in the right terminal to see some of the designs there. And then at the Field Museum, Chicago History Museum and Garfield Park Conservatory are just some of the ones that are really exciting to me to be able to be a visitor there and also see that my works made it into these really cool cultural institutions, um, which is a huge growth and jump from where I started. And even as I started with like being an eighth grader, not realizing you could design something that's in a museum gift shop, you could design something that's in an airport gift shop. Like that was not on my radar. Even at that point, I didn't realize that everything around us is designed and someone has a job to do that. Um, So, so much growth has happened over this this time. And I've just fallen in love with being able to kind of focus in on what I love doing most and finding the people who need that exact skill, who need that exact passion to bring it to their business and organization. And another thing I'm really passionate about is trying to work with more nonprofits and figuring out how does the work that I do, which is really specific in style, lettering and branding and illustration, how does that fit into their likely well-established brand? Because it's not a matter of redoing their logo if they have this long history and success, but it's a about reinventing some of their programs. It's bringing some humanization into their messaging and into the different efforts and campaigns that they have to really connect with people today and maybe not connect in the same way they have for all of these past years that they've built up this really strong history. First of all, kudos and congratulations for the massive success that you've had and love our tie-in and our pivot now into that nonprofit. So let's talk about that passion project that really got you started and what was your personal why, but now what is your kind of professional why with it? Yeah, my personal why was pretty simple. So the project that I created was in 2020. It launched in March of 2020, and it was called Cool Beans. 
And it feels like the project that keeps on giving because it is something that I created with this personal motivation and frustration really of what do I eat now that I'm officially diagnosed with polycystic kidney disease? And I've had a long family history of it. So I'm very familiar with the disease, but it got to like a more personal level of, okay, I might need to do some things differently now and figure out like what this means for me. And I found myself just being really frustrated by that. I think anyone who's had experience with chronic illness and different diseases knows that there's frustration that comes with that. There's confusion that it's hard to find information at the right time. It's overwhelming. It's all of these things. So I had this moment where I was like, I want to do more branding work, maybe for restaurants, maybe for local businesses. And I also need to do all this research I don't want to do. And so I brought those two together to say, I love researching when it's for branding, when it's for someone else. Can I make a project around that so I kind of get the motivation to do the research part that I don't want to do? So that was really the personal why. Like, how do I make this content? Also, how do we talk about this? Because it can be hard to bring up that you have a disease, especially when they're invisible illnesses. Like, this is an internal thing. You can't tell from looking at someone almost 99% of the time that they have some, some invisible illness. It's just not easily detectable to the outside public. So how do we create more work around that to start conversations? And then also the personal why translated into the business why of like, how can I do more meaningful work instead of just doing designs for anyone or my background in terms of internships was a lot of like home appliances, which the people were great. The content was okay. But at the end of the day, if I'm one person who loves having a solo business, I only have so much time and capacity to work on different topics and content. So instead of doing home appliances, could I do a meaningful cause? So I'm doing similar creative work, but could I go a step further now and do meaningful work to me that I think can make a bigger impact? And that's really the professional why is how can I use my skills for good? How can I personally connect the work in a deeper way? And how can I just enjoy this even more than I would if it's any content? Because I'm happy to design anything for the most part, but also like what if I got to choose what that was on top of it? So that's really been my path in the couple years since launching Cool Beans was like, how do I use this to show people like, I just love this so much. I love the work so much, but I love the content so much as well. And this is the right fit of a project for me. And I think I can have the greatest impact when I'm most passionate about the work, the work in general and the content too. Um, So that's really motivated me to put that out there, to share it with the right people. And some of the results have been being able to work with the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois, Gift of Hope in Illinois, being featured by the PKD Foundation, which is polycystic kidney disease, and even working with a small pharmaceutical company. And all of those things I never imagined doing, but felt so right at the time of like, this is the path that I'm putting myself on. And no one told me to do that passion project. And I think that's where going back to the hard lesson that I've learned is people will have ideas for you of like, oh, do a project around this. But the more you can lean into yourself and look internally and say, this is what's really relevant to me personally and relevant to my business, the more you can connect with the right people. And that's where the creative magic happens. It's so true. And I think what's really fun is you get joy from it. You get natural energy from it. And, you know, I think you are beautifully humanizing, to your point, diseases that are not necessarily seen to the naked eye, but so many people struggle with various diseases of many kinds. And I think what you've done is you've added your personal why into it, which has created these beautiful projects, these beautiful things that also act as encouragement and inspiration to those that are struggling with it. And so I think that that's just really incredible and really proud of you for doing that because I think sometimes people that have those illnesses, it's either do I kind of go inward and not talk about it or do I go outward and share it with the world? And I think you've done that in a beautiful, creative way. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I think it's motivated a lot too by just finding one or two people that it influences and affects makes it all worth it because it is a vulnerable, uncomfortable thing to like put into your work and put yourself so deeply into it. But I think it can lead to really beautiful relationships. It can even lead to a close friend realizing you both struggle with the same chronic illness 
is very illuminating. Like, how did that never come up in conversation? But it's hard to bring up. So it's a really great way to start conversations and to build community. Amazing. So Chelsea, for you, when you think about our GST factor life attributes of being confident, inquisitive, imaginative, being present, resilient, and influential, which one or two attributes you know, really resonate for you? And it could be what, what have you leaned into from your entrepreneurial journey or where are you at today? Either or. Yeah, I love them all. And I feel like in some ways I try to embody all of those because they're just great attributes. The two that probably jump out to me the most being that I'm creative, imaginative, like trying to reimagine anything creatively, but also reimagine what could entrepreneurship look like. And I think that goes hand in hand with being an artist of like, how can we do this differently? How can I do this my own style, my own way? How can I find people that appreciate that? And that does take some imagination of like envisioning that that's possible because it is something that not everyone does or not everyone feels they can do. So really leaning into that has been so helpful and encouraging and exciting. And I love just being creative with all the projects that I take on and trying to take on projects that are truly creative and have the space to be imaginative and creative and expressive and all those things that I associate with that. So I think that's the biggest one. But the second, I feel like for me, being a brand designer, being inquisitive is essential because my role as a designer is to translate the passion and creativity, even if it's not artistic creativity from the client to something they can use to empower them and bring them confidence in taking their next steps in business. And I don't think I can get to that point unless I'm asking lots of questions, unless I'm being curious and inquisitive about why are you here? What is the purpose of this? And asking those deeper whys of like, okay, that's what you said. But what's underneath that? What's underneath that? And like really pushing that curiosity, I think helps make better designs. And why does any of this matter? And it's asking that not to be critical, but to be somebody who wants to get deeper and find those things and then expose those things in a really beautiful way that allows for people to connect with the businesses. And so I think just asking those questions all the time is really important. And then there's one other piece of that inquisitive characteristic as well, which is like checking is what I'm doing actually meeting the goals. Because I think it's so easy to just try to make beautiful things. But graphic design and branding kind of adds this layer of strategy to it, where not only do these things need to be beautiful, they need to be functional, and they need to communicate clearly. And if we're not looking at the end product and asking those questions of like, is this doing what it needs to do? Do I need to make an update? Do we need to revise this? If you're not going through that process, you're just putting a lot of work out there that may or may not resonate with people. So I think that opens us up to being willing to change and adapt and make the next best version. It's not just a one and done piece, but that's, I think, how I'm a little bit different than a traditional artist is there is input in going back and forth. But then I push back as an artist and say, this should also be an art piece. We're not just trying to go back and forth all day and have a client design something because that's actually not in their best interest. They don't have the skill sets. That's why they're coming to a professional. So I think that inquisitiveness kind of goes both ways, but it's me asking myself a lot of that internally and then also involving the creatives that I work with, the small businesses that I work with, like how do we ask better questions so we can make better work? Love that. Beautifully said. And I think it is so important, especially for entrepreneurs. Like you may have an idea for a name or an idea for a brand or an idea, and it may resonate. It may, and it may come out okay in a brand. But if it's not translating to the outside audience, to your potential customers and clients, I think it's really important to kind of have that dialogue and have that creative person that you can have that very honest, transparent, vulnerable conversation with, right? Because sometimes people are so tied into their brand or so tied to a name that they think like, oh, I can never name it anything else or I couldn't let go of something. And uh, you know, I'll use an example. So I've had multiple businesses. My first one was etymology consulting. Now, of course, I have GSC Factor. And 
the brand of GSD Factor is, you know, I've had it evaluated. I've had a lot of people and professionals say that is a really great brand. There's a lot with that. It's sticky. It's getting shit done or getting stuff done, depending on who your audience is. And that's a really good sticky brand. Your etymology brand is not as sticky. It's not as memorable. It's hard to say. And so I have made that powerful decision this year to shut down the etymology side and shift into GSD Factor Consulting, where we can help you get shit done. But I had to be willing I had my kind of close people asking me those questions, being inquisitive with me saying, why etymology? What's the story behind it? Why did you go with it? And me also as the entrepreneur, you know, answering those questions, but then digging deep and saying, okay, am I willing to, am I willing to release it? Am I willing to kind of let it go to let something else come into fruition? Yeah, definitely. And that process is hard to get into because it takes questioning yourself, questioning your ideas, and also acknowledging that maybe where you started isn't where you're at now. And that doesn't invalidate what you've done in the past. Like shutting something down can feel like a failure, but I think it could also feel like a pivot and a fresh start. And sometimes people do that too often and too quickly where they're not really inquisitive about it. They're just like jumping to conclusions And I think when you can really lean into that inquisitive perspective and really ask the questions and not judge the answers, you can get to the answers that you need for making the next steps in business and doing ultimately what's right for you and what's right for your business. And asking the hard questions, they're hard, but they're necessary for making the hard decisions and the right decisions for you and those others that may be involved. All right. What is Chelsea powerfully choosing in 2024? Such a good question. I think the biggest thing that I'm powerfully choosing is to continue to optimize my business in a way that works for me. And one thing that's really showed up this year is figuring out how to optimize the work-life balance that really just lets me be me, whether it's a personal season, like getting married this year, or it's more of a business season, like launching something new or really pouring myself into a new idea. And I think it's just acknowledging that you can be confident in the choices that you're making. And there's so many options out there. So like, how do we make ourselves feel good about what we're choosing? And I think that in and of itself is a very powerful thing. Like, how do you feel good about the path that you're on? And for me, it's it's leaning into a lot of those GSD factors of like feeling confident about that, like knowing that you can have an influence, being resilient through the hard things that you're doing um, that come up when you're trying to do something big or important or following those biggest dreams and passion of yourself. And then it's asking questions and being inquisitive and also imagining what could your work and your world look like, but then being present and saying like, what I chose is great and I'm going to roll with it. And if I'm in a personal season, that's okay. If I'm in a heavy business season, that's okay because I will restore the balance if that's your goal. And for me, I think that's the biggest goal of like, how do I just enjoy life? And that's saying no to things and that's saying yes to things. And it's being willing to revise those decisions too, to just continue to optimize. How do we make this better and better and better every single day? Chelsea has been such an honor to have you on today. Such a great conversation. Thank you for joining us and thank you to our listeners. Be sure to check out the show notes where you can go out and purchase some of Chelsea's beautiful creations. And Chelsea, just thank you for sharing your story today. And to our listeners, don't forget to get shit done. Thanks for listening to the GSD Factor Podcast. If you liked this episode, please rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform where you can also find previous episodes. Let's also connect on LinkedIn and Instagram. If you're looking for more information on the GSD Factor, visit us at gsdfactor.com. And always remember to GSD, get shit done.